Science helps us explain how our world and the universe works, but it also shows us the extent of the knowledge that we do not have. Physics has undergone a great revolution in the 20th century and has helped answer many questions about how the universe works. However, it has also thrown up a whole load of questions and mysteries. With that in mind, here are 10 things you should know about physics. One, Einstein's theory of general relativity bends space and time. Of all of the advances made in physics, Einstein's contribution is probably unmatched due to the simplicity of his theory once it's understood. Einstein's theory of general relativity said that space bends where there is matter. For example, our sun bends space around it, and that is why the planets orbit the sun, kind of like a marble going round inside a funnel. And light is also bent by this bending of space caused by matter. One prediction that said that light would bend around the edge of our sun was tested and proven right in 1919. Not only does space bend, but time also bends. Einstein's theory said that time would pass quicker the higher up from Earth that somebody is. This was tested and was proven to be right. For example, if a twin spent his life living at the top of a high mountain and another twin spent his life living at sea level, when they meet up later on in life, the twin who's been living up the mountain would be older than the twin living at sea level. Also, based on Einstein's theory of general relativity, Carl Schwarzschild was able to develop the theory of black holes. Einstein's theory also says that space expands, contracts and moves like the sea due to waves caused by gravity. This part of the theory predicts that the universe came into existence from the explosion of young, dense and extremely hot atoms. This is known as the Big Bang. 2. Quantum mechanics has changed our everyday lives yet remains mysterious. Around the year 1900, while performing a calculation, Max Planck imagined that energy moves in packets or lumps of energy called quanta. Although he didn't understand why, this trick of calculation worked. Later, Albert Einstein showed that light, which is a type of energy, does move in packets and we refer to these packets of light as photons. Niels Bohr took this a bit further, exploring how electrons can take or give energy to move within different parts of an atom. From this, the first equations of quantum mechanics were written. Werner Heisenberg then took this research a step further, showing that electrons only exist in a particular place when they are being looked at or they are interacting with something. When you are not looking at an electron or it's not interacting with something, there is no way to predict where it is, it is in no set place until that interaction takes place. Does that sound confusing? Well, even Albert Einstein thought it did not make much sense, but quantum mechanics has changed our everyday lives. Items such as toasters, computers, mobile phones and GPS all rely on quantum mechanics. 3. General relativity and quantum mechanics help explain our universe. The human understanding of our world and what we see round about it has evolved and changed repeatedly over the years with new information. At first it was thought that the Earth was just a flat plane with sky up above it. Later this was developed to the thought that the Earth was actually a rectangular rock with sky all around it. Soon somebody came up with the idea that it made sense that the Earth and the sky would be spherical, giving you an even distance between the Earth and the sky. And later Aristotle used scientific arguments to show that the Earth was spherical. Copernicus took this a step further by showing that the Earth and the other bodies we could see in the solar system orbit around the Sun. Researchers using the Hubble Space Telescope showed that there are a vast number of galaxies out there, each containing billions of stars, and that space ripples, expands and contains black holes. Today we now know that our universe started off as a hot, dense, tightly packed cloud of atoms which rapidly expanded outwards to create our universe. Four. There's no such thing as empty space. Light consists of particles called photons as described by Einstein. Everything in our universe that we can see is made up of atoms, which consist of a nucleus surrounded by electrons. A nucleus is made up of tightly packed protons and neutrons, which in turn are made up of another type of particle called quarks, as named by the physicist Murray Gell-Mann. Now the force that holds protons and neutrons inside the nucleus is a particle called gluons. Electrons, quarks, photons and gluons are the elementary particles and they are in space all around us. 
If you look at an empty area of space, you might not see these particles, but they can be detected popping into and disappearing from existence. So particle theory shows us that there is actually no such thing as empty space. The theory known as the Standard Model of Elementary Particles has been developed over the decades by some great physicists such as Richard Feynman, and although the calculations are a bit complex, they currently work, so it's the best understanding that we have for particles. However, with the discovery of dark matter made up of particles that we don't know anything about and can't interact with, there is still a lot to be learned in the world of particle physics. 5. General relativity and quantum mechanics disagree with each other. If you were to go to a class on general relativity and another one on quantum mechanics in the same day, you would hear two different descriptions about how the world works, yet both of these theories have been tested and both of them have been shown to be right. Physicists are trying to find a way to tie these two theories together. This is not uncommon in physics. For example, the theory of electromagnetism was formed by combining the theory of electricity and the theory of magnetism. Physicists are looking at a way to tie the theory of general relativity to quantum mechanics and there's a lot of study being done in this area. Right now, the strongest contender for a theory to tie them together is called loop quantum gravity. One of the consequences of this theory shows that our universe did not start from that hot, dense cloud of atoms tightly packed together which then exploded out to form our universe, but is in fact part of what is called a big bounce rather than a big bang. In loop quantum gravity, the theory says that the universe would have been that small, tightly dense pack of atoms which would expand outwards until it reaches a certain size, at which point it would pull all the way back in again to that small point and then quantum mechanics would make it expand back out. This is why it's called the big bounce. It shows that the universe is potentially always going through this process of expanding outwards, coming back in and going back out again. There is still a lot of work to be done on loop quantum mechanics, however a lot of work already has been done and no fatal flaws have yet been discovered. This is a theory which could completely change how we view the universe around us. 6. Heat always moves from hot things to cold. Atoms and molecules which are a collection of atoms are constantly moving. When something is cold, the atoms and molecules inside it are moving more slowly, and when something is hot, the atoms and molecules are moving more rapidly. As we will have noticed, heat moves from hot things to cold. For example, if you put a cold spoon into a cup of tea, the spoon will heat up. Or if you go outside on a very cold winter's day but you're not wrapped up for the weather, your body will lose heat out into the cold air round about it. So why does heat transfer from a hot object to a cold object and not the other way round? Well, this is due to probability. There is more chance that a fast moving atom is going to strike a slow moving atom and transfer some of its energy. When there are a lot of these impacts, the energy tends to get shared out pretty equally. So when two objects of different temperatures are put together, the temperature tends to even out. It's not impossible that a hot object could get heat from a cold object, it's just incredibly unlikely. 7. Heat is connected to time, but there is still much to be understood about this. If I was to swing a pendulum in a situation where there was no friction and record it, the recording would look the same forwards as it does backwards. There would be no difference between the future and the past. However, if I was to swing a pendulum right now under normal circumstances, the friction of the string moving with the pendulum on the end will transfer heat energy into my fingers and this will slow the pendulum down. Therefore, there is a clear difference between the future and the past in this situation. Time sits somewhere in amongst general relativity, quantum mechanics and thermodynamics, which is the study of heat. However, we don't yet have the equations to explain hot vibrating time. A clue did come from Stephen Hawking who showed that black holes are always hot and this tied together general relativity, quantum mechanics and thermodynamics, but has not yet been figured out to allow us to properly understand the nature of time. 8. Physics is connected to other sciences. Physics is a fundamental and all-inclusive science and many people in different fields study physics because of the role it plays in the world. Some sciences connected to physics and examples of how they connect are Chemistry. The periodic table of elements is based on theoretical similarities between the elements. This has its foundation in quantum mechanics, so theoretical chemistry is basically theoretical physics. Biology. 
our nervous system produces electrical impulses, so the physics of electrical effects helps bring some understanding to this. Astronomy We have already seen how physics has affected our understanding of the cosmos, and now there is a field of study called astrophysics which brings these two areas of study together, astronomy and physics. Geology and Meteorology The instruments used in these two sciences were developed as part of experimental physics. And that is just a drop in the ocean of how physics is connected to these sciences. There are lots of other sciences it's connected to and lots of other ways that it is connected to the ones that have even been mentioned. 9. We currently have no knowledge of what energy actually is. Energy is described as the ability of a system to do work. There are lots of different types of energy that we use, observe and measure and we understand that energy can transfer from one type of energy to another but what energy is itself is not fully understood. Here are some types of energy and examples of how they can transform into another type of energy. Kinetic energy. This is the energy of something in motion and this is the type of energy you use when you move about. The more energetically you move about, the hotter you will feel yourself become. That is a kinetic energy being transformed into heat or thermal energy. Gravitational energy. This is a pull between two objects based on their mass. If you had a book sitting on a bookshelf, it has gravitational potential energy. Gravity is trying to pull it down to the ground, but the bookshelf is stopping it from falling. If the book was then to fall off the shelf, that gravitational energy gets changed into kinetic energy as the book gets pulled towards the ground based on the force of gravity. Sonic energy. This is the energy of sound waves as they move through a gas, liquid or a solid. Kinetic energy can be transformed into sonic energy. For example, when somebody is playing the piano, they need to move their finger to press a key and pressing that key makes a hammer move and hit a string. That is the kinetic energy. And when that hammer hits a string, a sound is produced. That is a transfer of kinetic energy into sonic energy. Thermal energy. This is heat energy and it shows the difference in temperature between two objects. As mentioned earlier, when something gets warmed up, its atoms and molecules start to move even faster. This shows the transfer of heat energy into kinetic energy. And finally, electromagnetic energy. This is the energy of light waves and other electromagnetic waves such as microwaves, x-rays and radio. When used for cooking, microwaves transform into heat energy as the food is warmed up. 10. The amount of energy there is in the universe does not change. There is a scientific law called the conservation of energy which shows that energy is not created or destroyed but that the energy in the universe stays at a constant level. In number 9 we saw that there are different types of energy and these can transform into other types of energy. When a hammer moves to strike the string inside a piano, that kinetic energy is not lost. We hear it get transformed into sound energy. If you press a key hard, the hammer is going to strike the string hard and you will get a loud note. If you press the key gently, the hammer will hit the string gently and you get a soft note. What would not happen though is pressing the key gently and getting a loud note because that means that more energy would have been created. The conservation of energy also means that if you had a weight hanging down from a string, you could pull it back and hold it up to your chin, let it go and allow it to swing and come back towards you and it will not hit you in the face. I performed this demonstration as well as other experiments to do with the conservation of energy and explaining about it in a bit more depth in a previous video, so I'll put a link in the description for you to check that out. There are two things that you should keep in mind at the end of this video. One, there are a lot of incredible advances that have been made in physics, making their way into other sciences and having a positive impact on our daily lives. Despite this, there is still a lot that we do not know about physics and there are a lot of mysteries to be solved and it is up to the future generations of physicists, perhaps even you, to help figure these out. And two, physics explains a lot about how the world and the cosmos works as well as the natural order of things. No matter how special humanity thinks it is, we are all bound by the laws of physics just like everything else in nature, from the largest supermassive black hole down to the smallest creature living on Earth. Physics binds us all. Thank you for watching this Things You Should Know video. The majority of the information in this video came from 7 Brief Lessons on Physics by Carlo Rovelli and 6 Easy Pieces by Richard Feynman.
I was only able to give you a tiny fraction of the amazing physics information that is out there. So I encourage you to go out and look at this information for yourself and see what you can learn. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all future content. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added a link here to the other things you should know videos I've done and down at the bottom I've put links to my STEM demonstration and explanation videos and also to my STEM career interviews. This has been STEM with Mr N exploring 10 things you should know about physics.